Hello, this is Running Robert, and today we're going to be talking about the Xeris Pharmaceuticals XERS quarter four 2023 and full year summary. Uh, today is the 7th of March 2024, and in this summary, we are going to be looking at the quarter four results, we're going to be looking at the full year results, and then kind of what is in store for this company in 2024. So I generally follow small cap pharma, I do some games, I do a little bit of everything. So if you like what I'm doing, please like and subscribe, it helps out a lot, and thank you. Disclaimer is I do own shares. I did reduce some of my position around $3, just so you know. I'm an amateur investor and any advice given should be followed up by your own due diligence and any information given is valid for today, the 7th of March. And the slideshow will not be updated, but as you know, as we get new news or new reports, new slideshow. So let's just go right into the numbers to begin with because this is probably the most interesting part of the slide that we're going to go over. So this is looking at the quarter four versus quarter three growth for all the products. So obviously, Gvoke had a little about 5% increase. Caveus was down by 11%. Recorlev was up by 22%. And uh, the EU version of Gvoke was up 200, but that was 1.8 from 0 0.6. In total, it was $44 million of revenue compared to $42 million. So a 5% increase, so a little bit of an increase. Nothing to really write home about. But again, we see the growth. And of course, we see the issues. But let's go to the yearly, and then we can talk a little bit more about the quarterly results. So they ended the year with a little over $72 million. Uh, they did estimate their total net revenues to be $170 to $200 million for 2024. I am estimating that they should spend about $220 million in 2024, and that is based on the quarter four expense of about 55. So 55 times 4 should be about 220. So their expected year-end cash is expected to be between 55 and $75 million. And the big thing is the Hafen loan. They pushed off the debt for five years, plus they got extra cash. So this is going to bring up an interesting point because this is probably one of the more bullish points of this presentation. Hafen has a loan coming up and they decided, hey, we can extend this. And one of the reasons they extend it is because they have confidence that Xeris will be able to pay it off and pay off an extra amount to it. So I think this is definitely one of the more bullish parts of it is that we should not have to worry about a cash raise or any kind of company issues, definitely for this year and beyond. So I think that is an extremely bullish part, and we're gonna, gonna go from there. So the quarter, quarterly report. So of course, 44 million in revenues, 54 in expenses. We did see strong sales from Recorlev. That was really nice to see that it's actually starting to pick up steam. Um, unfortunately, like most this year, we're just, we're just waiting for it to pick up some steam. And it seems like it finally is getting there. Obviously, we have steady sales for GVOC and EU GVOC that they're just going to continue to grow. But we did see our first signs of slipping for Caveus, and that's because there's been a generic. The generic has been on the market for almost a year. So this is the first quarter we've actually seen it slip. So it is concerning. We knew this day would come. But again, that's you know one of the things that we have to look at. And then of course, uh, they will issue 7.5 million shares to Strongridge Bio holders. Uh, this is a CRV when they uh, bought Strongridge Bio a long time ago. So this is a one-time thing and should not have a huge impact on us overall, but there is going to be an impact. So the rest. So what? everything else. So of course, XP8121 Phase 2 data is expected mid-2024. If that is positive, the Phase 3 maybe might start in mid-2025. That was said in the call. Um I don't have a huge, I, I believe that XP8121 is going to be more like a GVOC. I don't think it's going to be a game changer, but I think it's going to be a good revenue gainer. Uh, the Amgen deal is moving forward. On the conference call, they talked about setting up teams and getting that stuff together as they continue to start with a lot of the preclinical work, which at some point will move to clinical work. Uh, there does not have to be like a phase one, phase two, phase three kind of thing for this since it is a drug that is already approved. It moves more like a generic. And so they will just have to do a comparison study and then stability and stuff like that. So it'll be quicker, but I don't see any major movement probably for 2024. And then the Regeneron deal is ongoing. Most likely over the next six months, we should have some more color on it. So really, we should know if Regeneron is moving forward probably by the end of 2024. Obviously, some things to look at will be if they add any more molecules uh, to the deal or at, again, at the very end, seeing if they actually accept it and move on. So was the call good or bad? 
so the company continues to lessen the quarterly losses, but that seems to be slowing down. So last year, their net loss per quarter was like 20, 25 million per quarter. All of a sudden, we're down to 10 or 11 million. So obviously, we've seen some good impact for that, but it seems like it is slowing down. Uh, we are seeing the generic impact to Kveus. However, with the increase in Rikulev, which is the plan, one was supposed to take out the other, which is fine. This might lead to net zero, which wouldn't help us, but would set us up for 2025. So again, we know that Kveus does 14 million a quarter. If uh, Rikulev can take 14 million a quarter by next year, we know we're going to be setting up for much better 2025. Obviously, that's really what we're going to be looking for. So the company's moved forward with business growth and partnerships. They are still trying to deal everything they can. And I think that's good. So overall, the call, though, was okay. And we definitely saw some bearish results from it. And a lot, a lot of that, I, think, I didn't think they saw as much. The, the net loss was probably a little bit wider than they wanted. But I believe they're set up for a decent 2024, though it might be slightly boring just because I, you know, I don't, unless one of the drugs just takes off or Kaveas just completely falls apart. I, I think it's going to be kind of a boring year. So moving forward, what do we look for? So really what I'm looking for is uh, Rekorlev growth, Kaveas generic threat. And those two kind of move together. Obviously, if Rekorlev doesn't grow and Kaveas generic is really taken out, that's going to be definitely a net negative. Obviously, if it goes the opposite direction, it's going to be very positive. Uh, XP8121, is that moving forward? And then any new deals or Regeneron moving forward? So again, looking at just their partnership deals, trying to figure out what that looks like. So the market cap is around 425 million. That is from stock twit. So it probably is slightly inaccurate, but it's the easiest thing I could pull. Uh, I did recommend the stock around a dollar and it was definitely one of my top, top stocks last year. And it definitely hasn't disappointed. However, is there more growth here? And one of the reasons I made the summary or have been following the summary is that you can get the entire picture. And when you're looking at the picture, 2024 might be a wash year. As unless there is some kind of significant change, I don't see a real change in the stock price without some new information or news. Again, we're going to, you know, not quite be uh, an even company. We're still probably, it looks like we are still going to lose some money next year. But it's not enough that we need to worry about dilution or anything like that so again it it might just be a wash and so it might be an investment science at this point knowing that hey the rest of 2024 might be boring or you might say you know what i might come back to this maybe a little bit later and then see where it is so but like i said hopefully all this information helped you make some good uh investment decisions and yeah that's really all i'm trying to do so thank you very much for watching and listening and i hope you have a wonderful day